Teardown time. This is an optical mouse. Uh, in fact, if you look at this little text here, it says laser, which means that it's an infrared uh, optical mouse. Let's uh, look at this component uh, in great detail. Uh, so here's the uh, mouse with the top cover removed, exposing, of course, the circuit board. If we uh, zoom into the upper right, we can see the heart of an optical mouse, and that's uh, this component here. Uh, let's just pop it off and flip it upside down, and uh, we can see that there's some sort of optical guide that's been glued to the top of the circuit board, and then there's that uh, flex cable that uh, runs back uh, to the most main circuit board. Uh, the components are quite interesting. It's going to have two things in it. It's going to have a, a laser which generates light uh, illuminating a surface, and then there's a, a very specialized optical detector and some signal processing which is used to detect motion. Let's um, snip off that uh, top uh, plastic and uh, take a look at the assembly. There is uh, two components. Uh, the first is a laser. It's uh, rather small, so I have it highlighted here. It's on the right-hand side where the arrow is pointing, the circles have been uh, scribbled. Um, it's a laser mouse, uh, which mine means that this is a uh, IR laser. A uh, super small die, uh, and that makes sense because uh, a mouse has to be um, eye-safe. Uh, meaning, of course, if you look straight into it, it doesn't damage your eye. Which, of course, implies very little uh, optical energy, and of course that would probably translate into a little tiny die. Um, going on to the left-hand side, uh, here's the heart of it uh, in terms of image processing and uh, signal detection. Uh, we'll just uh, zoom into the whole dyer photograph, and uh, the next thing, of course, when you're doing this work is to figure out what in the world you're looking at. Uh, best strategy, of course, is to uh, just find the part number, and that can often lead into the data sheet and block diagram. Uh, in this case, uh, it's labeled T7786. Um, no matter what I googled, unfortunately, uh, no results came up, so uh, we'll have to t do a backup. The backup, of course, uh, is the U.S. patent system, uh, an absolutely amazing resource. Uh, it's basically a detailed record of all the technology which uh, underlies our whole civilization. Uh, basically, if you want to know how something works, uh, head off to uh, USPTO.gov. Uh, with a bit of searching, I found uh, this patent. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, the first thing you want to figure out is whether or not you're looking at the Keystone patent, and you want to see how many patents cite another patent. And uh, when you get one with a long list, it tells you that you're probably looking at one of the uh, starting patents, which uh, generally has the richest amount of information. Um, this particular one uh, comes from Agilent, uh, which makes good sense. They were very active at the start of the optical mouse uh, development area. And uh, when you flip through it, you can find a nice little block diagram. Uh, now let's take that block diagram and uh, put a photograph of the chip right next to it so we can sort of sort down uh, block by block uh, how the die matches up with the um, block diagram. Uh, first one up, of course, uh, the image sensor. Uh, it's a 30 by 30 array of uh, photodiodes and uh, it's sitting there at the top of the chip. Uh, below that uh, is a signal conversion uh, block. Uh, clearly the uh, photodiodes will be an analog signal and you need to get that into a digital form. So um, I suspect also it's pretty complicated because it actually has to uh, scan the array and convert to that digital stream. Uh, below that, of course, uh, signal processing. Uh, two classic terms pop up in the block diagram. Correlation and interpolation. Uh, and that's uh, some of the language you'd always find uh, when you're doing image processing. Uh, interesting enough, it looks like the Sea of Gates uh, doesn't have any processor section. I didn't see any RAM or ROM below there. It looks like it's just a, a great array of uh, gates, um, which implies to me it's probably a complex state machine. Fascinating. So let's take a closer look at those photo detectors, uh, obviously an array of squares, uh, but what are they? Uh, to understand that, you have to read a few papers. Um, here's a slide from an excellent presentation I found from the University of Washington. Uh, if you want to read the whole details, I'm going to put a link of it uh, in the uh, description of this video. Uh, it looks like that big square is basically a bit of silicon, uh, and when a photon strikes it, it causes electrons to cross uh, the depletion region. And of course, that's going to create a voltage which can be sensed. Um, now, to figure out what's going further, I have to strip the metal off this chip and uh, take a look at what's going on uh, beside each of those square pixels. Um, and we do that, it looks like there's an array of components uh, next to each one. Let me just highlight a single column and row. And uh, let's just zoom a bit closer and you can clearly see there's a transistor sitting next to each of the pixels. Uh, to uh, sort down what's going on here, let's go back to that excellent paper and find another slide. Uh, it looks like uh, each photodiode has its own amplifier and uh, that explains some of the transistors. It's also interesting that there's probably some sort of electronic shutter going on here. You basically need to periodically uh, discharge the well. Uh, let it charge up and sample the voltage, so uh, it looks like there's uh, some transistors which are involved in that. Let's uh, go back to the entire chip and uh, look at one section we haven't talked about yet. Uh, highlighted in red is all the peripherals. Uh, undoubtedly this chip's going to have to have some sort of time generation scheme. 
uh, some voltage regulators, and uh, even a FET switch which turns the uh, laser on and off. It looks like if you look at the assembly, uh, this chip actually controls the laser's uh, power supply. Uh, now, they're not very interesting on this slide because the metal's obscuring what's going on. So, uh, again, let's uh, look at the uh, stripped die with the metal removed. And uh, you can really see, of course, hiding below all those metal uh, traces is uh, a lot of polysilicon, which tells you much more about what's going on. Now, uh, these are very hard things to analyze quickly in a video, but uh, if you want to take a look at the dies in details, I'll have them up, of course, on my blog, uh, electronupdate.blogspot.com. Uh, before we do that, though, let's take a look at the, some of the zigzag array of metal, and below that, of course, are an array of polysilicon squares. I believe this is either a power transistor or a capacitor. I must admit, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I know I've got a few people following this blog who happen to be chip designers in the analog world, and uh, perhaps I could chime in and tell me if I'm looking at a transistor or a capacitor. Last, but not least, uh, here's the uh, photograph of that uh, laser diode. So there you go, a world of technology in an optical mouse. Uh, just amazing the things that we are surrounded with, and when you take a close look at them, all the technologies that were involved uh, in their creation.